In this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily make professional looking rolling end credits in Adobe Premiere Pro. But I'm actually gonna structure this tutorial in reverse. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to animate this, like how to make it roll. Then I'll show you how to build it. And then at the end, I'll show you a few other tricks that you can do with your credits, like adding a video in the background or something like that. Okay, so to make this roll, it's super, super easy. So once you've built all of your text, then just click on your graphic down here, Make sure you're going over to Essential Graphics. If you don't see it, go to Window, Essential Graphics right there. And then simply just go down here and click Roll. And then when you go to the start of your clip, you're gonna see that your text is just gonna roll up. Your credits are gonna be set and going. Now, the shorter you make this, your clip, the faster it's gonna go. So if I shorten it up, you can see it goes faster. And the longer I stretch this out, the slower it's going to go. So at this point, if you already know how to build your credits, then skip ahead to the time I have on the screen for some other rolling credits tricks. Otherwise, keep watching and I'll show you how to build your credits like this. All right, so as you can see, in order to build credits like this, it really comes down to making three different types of text. There's center aligned text that's usually like titles, things like that. There's the left aligned text that's usually the actor names and it's usually like all caps and a little bit more bold. Then there's the right aligned text that's usually the character names. And you can see it's a little bit either smaller or skinnier and usually only capitals on the first letter. So let's just skip over to a brand new sequence so we can build those three text boxes first. So all you have to do is go down to your type tool here and then just go up and click on your screen anywhere you want. You're gonna see this red cursor thing show up and down here a graphic is gonna be added to your timeline. That's just where your text is gonna be. If we head over here to Essential Graphics, again, if you don't see it, just go to Window and Essential Graphics. This is where we're gonna be able to adjust your font and scale and position and stuff of your text. To be able to type in here, just click on this T and then start typing. So I'm gonna go directed by, enter, and then all caps, Sean Dolinsky. Just know that if you wanna change any of your text, you have to click in and highlight what you wanna change. So for example, I'm gonna change directed by. Over here, I'm using Corbel as my font. I'm gonna change that from regular to light. So it's a little bit skinnier. And I'm just gonna drop it down. Here's the font size. I'm gonna drop this down to 90 to make it a little bit smaller. And then within your text box, so within this red box, this is how you line it up. So right now it's left aligned. I want it to be center aligned because this is gonna be my center aligned text. But as you can see, it's just within this box. If I want it centered in the whole frame, I have to go back up here to this one, align and transform, and click this, horizontal center. And that's gonna put it right there. Then to be able to move it up and down, I'm gonna use this right here. So this second one, if I click and drag left, it's gonna move it up and drag right, it's gonna move it down. So I'm just gonna put it up like this. And then I'm gonna click back in here and just go enter, enter, and add cast as well. But obviously you can make cast its own text box if you want as well. So speaking of making new text boxes, to add more, so right now we're gonna add the actor names over here. You just go back over to Essential Graphics down to this thing, new layer, click on it, and then select text. A new text thing is gonna show up. You can click in there, and once you're clicked in, you can also go Control or Command A to select everything. And then you can also just start typing. So I'm gonna just put Adam Sandler for now, and let's go Will Farrell. So this is the right font and size, so I'm just gonna highlight it just to make sure. So over here, I want it to be 100, and I want it to be Corbel Regular. So that's the same as what I had for Sean Delinsky and Cast. Now to add the last bit of text, obviously we just go back over here again, click on this, and text. It's gonna overlap maybe. So I'm just gonna use this left and right thing, just kind of just slide it over here. And then I'm just gonna type these character names. So I'm gonna use Billy Madison and Ron Burgundy. Now for this side, I also have to go in, highlight this, and then go down to my text thing here and right align it. Cause this side is right aligned and this side is left aligned, which this one already was. Now all we have to do is align our text properly within the frame. So to do that, we're actually gonna go to this wrench and we're gonna go show rulers and we're gonna go back to the wrench 
and go show safe margins. So the rulers are now over here and the margins are these kind of boxes. I just want this little like middle line, like notch thing at the top here. So the thing you have to know is that my screen here is a 4K UHD screen. So it's, if we look at the top of these numbers, it's 3840 by 2160 here. If you're operating in 1080, yours will be 1920 by 1080. The reason why that's important is because the middle is the number that we need. So for 3840, my middle is gonna be 1920. If yours is 1920, if you're filming in 1080, your middle is gonna be 860. So now if I go over here and click within these rulers, I can drag a guideline out and just pay attention to the number that's going with it there. If I go right to the middle, that's that 1920 that I was talking about. If I go right to the right, that's where I wanna drop one of them. I wanna go back, click in here and drag another one out. So it's just to the left. Now we want them to be the same distance from the middle, the one to the left and the one to the right. So to make sure of that, if you just go to your selection tool here and you right click over the line, you'll see edit guide. So I'm gonna click on that one and I just gotta do a little bit of math here. So I want each of them to be 60 away from the middle. So that means that I need to add 60 to 1920 for this one. So this will be 1980 and just click okay and you'll see that it'll move to that spot. And then I'm gonna hover over this one, right click, edit guide, and I'm gonna take away 60 from 1920. So this one's gonna be 1860 and then I'll click okay. So now they're the same distance from the left and to the right of the middle. Now, if we click on any of our text, we can use those guidelines to line it up. But if you just kind of, if you're trying to do it like this, you can see it's not snapping to the line. Even if we, you know, zoom in here, we can see that, yeah, we can maybe try and line it up perfectly, but it's not snapping to it. So what you want to do is also go up here to view and down to snap in program monitor. Now, when we go close, it's going to snap. Those red lines are going to go bang and snap it into place. And then we can just scroll up here and kind of move it to exactly where we want. You can also go over here. You can see, watch these numbers as I move this, they're gonna move with it. So if you kind of get it close and it's kind of snapping you away from where you want, then just get it lined up and then use this one right here to move it up and down to where you want. So I'm gonna put it about right there. Then we just click on the other one. I'm just gonna slide this over and bring that into place. And you can see the, the red lines will help you line it up. So right there, we'll snap it right into place and it'll be in line with the other side. And now the only thing I have to do is just make sure that my text is proper. So I want like directed by up here. I want these ones, the character names to be the same as that. So if I double click in here to highlight it or click in and go control or command A to highlight everything, I'm gonna go over here back down to my text in Corbel and I'm gonna change it back to light again. And you know what? I'm gonna change it to 90 as well because that's what directed by was, just know that if you do this, if this text is a different size than this one, the more you write in here, the more it's gonna unalign. So if I just go enter A, B, C, D in here, and do the same thing here, so A, B, C, and D, you're gonna see that they don't align anymore. So then just highlight everything over here and go back over to your text and use this third one. So one, two, three. And if you just click on that and slide, it'll adjust the spacing between kind of the rows. So you can kind of line it up to make sure your text is lined up again from this side to this side. At this point, if you're happy with the design and layout of your credits, you can also save them as a template for future use as well by just clicking on them, going up to graphics and clicking on export as motion graphics template right here. That will open it up in this window. Just call it, let's say movie credits, and then it'll save in your local templates folder, include the video thumbnail, just click okay. Now in the future, if you want to use this again, all you have to do is go over to your essential graphics and instead of being on edit, just click on browse and go and find it. So you can type it in here. So I'm just gonna type in credits and hit enter, and it'll give me some other credits that are already in here. But if I go to the bottom, you'll find your credits right here. And if I delete this, all you have to do to use them is just click 
and drag it on and boom, they will be loaded up and ready to go. And I guess that brings us back to the very start when we have this complete and we're ready to have our credits roll. I'm just gonna go back into the wrench and unclick show guides and unclick show rulers and unclick safe margins so I can have my black screen back and we are ready to have this thing roll. So I'm gonna show you it again. So all you have to do is make sure you're clicked on your clip. Don't be selected on anything. You can't be selected on any of your boxes here. You gotta kinda of click away down here somewhere and then click back on your graphic. Then just go over here to roll, click on it, and you're ready to go. So you push play and it is rolling. Remember, the shorter you have this clip, the faster it's gonna go. So now this is gonna fly up the screen and the longer you have it here, more stretched out, the slower your credits are gonna go. A couple of the things to be aware of here is that you don't have to have it start off screen. So if I uncheck this, it's gonna start right in the middle or wherever you positioned it. So it'll start there and move off. And then same thing, the opposite here, you might start it off screen, but it's gonna scroll in to the spot that you left it, that you had it. You can also do here a pre-roll to have it delay a little bit, but I mean, you can also just move your clip over. I don't understand that one really. So all that means is that if I type in, if I click here and I slide this up to like four seconds, it's not gonna start rolling until the four second mark here. So it's delayed, 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 and then it will start going from there. Ease in, that just means that you can set a time here as well. And for that first five seconds, for example, it's gonna go even slower coming in and then it's gonna start to speed up and uh, go faster once it gets past that five seconds. And obviously ease out is just on the other end. So if I put five seconds here, once it gets to that last five seconds, it's gonna slowly kind of drift out. Okay, so now what if you have more names than fit on the screen? Well, if I click over here on roll to get rid of it, that was my original frame that I was typing in. But as soon as you click on roll, now there's this slider that's added and it gives you a lot more space to work with. So if I needed more names in here, I could just double click in and you know add whatever I want in here. And then the roll effect is just gonna to adjust to what I added. So if I added more things, it's actually just gonna make it go a little bit faster because it has more names to get through by the time it gets to there. And it would go slower with the less things you have. And then to end the video, I'm just gonna show you how to change your background if you want. So if you don't want it to be black, you want like a video clip back there or an image or a different color, it's pretty simple. All you do is take your clip and drag it under your text. So if my text is on layer one, I'm gonna have to drag it up to layer two and then just drag whatever I want behind there underneath it. Just know that if you get a clip like this, that's like a high contrast video clip behind it, I have some like really bright spots and then some dark spots you might wanna put a drop shadow on your text. Just know that you're gonna to have to do it to each one of these separately. So I'm just gonna do it to the main like actor names here. Just drop this down, go down to drop shadow and you know mess with your settings here to make it kind of pop out a little bit. That's probably too much of a drop shadow. So I'd have to kind of bring this back a little bit. Something like that will work to just make it so it stands out still. You can also just go to your actual clip underneath here and maybe drop the opacity, you know, kind of darken it up. So it's the best of both worlds, like almost a black screen, but you still get the visual behind it. You can also tint it. So if we go to effects, this is a kind of a good one here. So if you go to tint and just drag that onto your clip and then go down to your effect controls here, I'm just gonna map the blacks to maybe like a dark, dark blue, something like that. And then maybe my whites, I'm gonna map to maybe like some sort of brighter purple. So then that'll obviously give it a tint back there to give it kind of a unique look as well. And then if you just want it to be a completely different color, then just go over here. I just slid this part over where my project files are and go down to new item and click color mat, click okay, and then just pick the color that you want. So I'm gonna just go with like a deep red here, call it what you want. I'm gonna go red. And then just same thing, drag that underneath. And then now you'll see that that's the new color that's underneath your video. And that's it. That's all I got for creating rolling credits in Premiere Pro. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.